when God gave the nations, the church, he gave that nation the answer to their problems. Because God's kingdom is not just a spiritual place. What you don't know is that God's kingdom is a country. There's power in knowledge. There's power in information. There's power in knowing something. If you know what has been written concerning health, it is easy to claim healing. If you know what has been written concerning finance, it is easy to claim wealth. If you know what has been written concerning business, you, there are words in the scriptures that have you run to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Hallelujah. This month is July. I don't know. The month I was born, I was asking God. God is a special month. And uh, I want something special in the life of the people. In life because it's the month of my birth and uh, I know there's a new wave right now in Africa there's a new move globally right now God is um, entrusting the key to all sectors of life back to the church there's a new move there's something new happening something new happening and uh, I want to say that you are born in a very time of your life. Privileged to be born at a very strategic era of your life. Something God wants to do with you that he has not yet done with anyone. It's true. You, you need to get that concept. Something, a move God wants to move in your life first and with you that Africa has not experienced before. There's something coming. It's so big. It's going to shake the four cardinal points of the world. Yes. It's going to shake. It's going to quick the whole earth. And each time I see this thing coming, I keep seeing you in the picture. I keep seeing you as that generation that would take the people into the promised land. I keep seeing the Joshua generation that will launch the people into the promise. People who will emancipate all walks and sectors and spheres of life. And um, there's one thing God laid in my heart for this month. The whole of this month has a month of wisdom. And then... Um, because God's to me, what it takes to win and rule kingdoms is wisdom. Nothing else. By wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, the house is established. That's what it takes. God said, you want to move the people to their promise. Move them to a realm of influence, move them to a realm of where they would become, you know, giant killers. Men who would dethrone dynasty. Who would dethrone who would take empires men who would be who would run exploits in there are about 12 pillars of society yeah seven mountains yes but if you uh, do a deeper study you see there are 12 of them 12 mountains of society standard number is seven seven mountains there's education there's um, the politics and government there's the economy, there's the media and entertainment. Of course, they've splitted media from entertainment, so there are two different things now. But if you're looking at it from the seventh angle, is media and entertainment, or art and media. There is uh, culture, there's religion, and all of that. These are different mountains of society. And listen, God wants to give these mountains back to the church. These mountains have been in the hands of unbelievers for so long. Economy has been unbelievers for so long. Finances, the business world, politics. But there's a new move. God is returning the mountains back to the church because the mountains are His. They are His. That's why He said in the book of Isaiah that in the last days, I will do what? I will exalt what? 
the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all other mountains. And what will happen? Nations. What is it? The nations. The nations will flow to it. I will exalt the mountain of God's house above all other mountains. All other mountains. All other mountains. Not left. All other mountains. Then what will happen? The nations will flow. So God wants to exalt the church above all of the mountains. God wants to exalt you above all of the mountains. That's what it means. The church is not the building. The church is the individual. That means that when you look at all the spheres and sectors of life, you find church people ruling. Look at the economic world, the banking world, industry, commerce, marketplace. You see church people ruling. You look at education, the best schools. British standard, US standard, the best schools in Africa, best schools in Nigeria, the best school in this land, run by church people. You look at um, entertainment, no more of the bunch and uh, um, tooth and what is it called, uh, Nicki Minaj and the rest of them. That is what it means. Entertainment, take it for you. Look at the media sector, we own TV stations that will broadcast sound news, not bad news good news. You no longer be telling the world how 40, 10 persons have died, how 40, 11 people have been killed, or whatever. We'll be telling the world how souls are being harvested for the kingdom. Yes. Media. we we'll use the meat, the platform to preach the gospel. Put crusades on the internet. We'll take technology, technology, mountain. Because it's what Facebook is doing is not one of those are invention. It has an agenda. It's a mountain. And God is going to empower the church now with all kinds of wisdom. We are not going to come to church and sit down like we used to sit before. We come down and sit down, clap hands, clap a Bible and whatever. And go back home and the world is busy inventing all kinds of crazy things. If you look back to history, you will see that God's perfect plan was for the church to really have dominion. Okay, if you look at Genesis chapter 1. Look at verse 26, where it says, let them have dominion. That dominion is all on passing. Check God. You will see that there is no sect of God God has not been able to influence. Yes. All these things called spheres of society, he started it. Agriculture is a sphere. Who started it? God did. The first farmer in the world. God. The first landscaper in the world. God. Family is a sphere. It's an institution. Family. Who started it? God did. It's not good for man to be alone. I'll make him help me. But you see these sectors. The devil is taking control of them now. Family life is breaking up. Family institution is by the day failing. Marriage is failing. God wants the church to go back to the basics now. Okay, you see. He started family. Church. He started it. Yes, now fellowship was started by him. All these things we are doing. He was the first man to do fellowship. House fellowship. How did he start? He was coming down from heaven in the cool of the evening to have church with Adam and Eve. Science and technology. Go and check. All these guys who are traveling to the moon. Who invented the moon? All the galaxies. Who put them there? All the stars. All the laws of gravity and laws of motion. Who put them there? Who? Who put them there? Okay, you can also say he was a business expert. Quality management consultant. How did he build the world? He set goals. He had management principles. The first day, he built this. Second day, he built that. Third day, he did this. Fourth day, he did that. Fifth day, he did that. What do you see there? Goal setting. So God also is a quality management consultant. That means if he teaches you how to build a company, you won't fail. Because he built one. What do you think he built? Eden. What is Eden? 
Eden is just one whatever. What is Eden? Eden is a system. Eden had systems. Aquatic life. Eden had agricultural system. Eden had irrigation system. Yet there were four rivers now that were supplying water to all those trees. Eden had, what do you call it? A, a wildlife. There were wildlife in Eden. There were animals, lions and all that. So where was the first zoologist from? Eden. Where is the first farmer from? Eden. The first pastor? Eden. The first husband? Eden. First wife? Eden. First technology, science and technology? Eden. Everything? Eden. We lost it. This was God's original plan. No? This was God's original plan. Before there was ever media, there had been media in heaven. Who is the media director of heaven? Angel Gabriel. Who broadcast the news of Jesus' birth? Angel Gabriel. There's entertainment. What are those angels singing to the point that's doing? They're entertainers. Your music ministers. There's fashion in heaven. Have you seen the clothes angels wear? When a man was about to die, Jesus was about to die. They were crucifying him, but they collected the clothes first. Fashion. It's a sphere we need to go back and take. We left it for the devil, and the devil taught the world the wrong thing. There's nothing bad in fashion. What is bad is what the world presently defines as fashion. But there's nothing wrong with fashion. And God wants to send the church to the basis. There's something we left. You know, we play church, play religion, you know, the dress fine, look good, but until we go back to one component that can guarantee the church taking dominion back, we will not still take dominion. Okay, let's look at history. From the life perspective. Look at guys like the Wright brothers. The guys who invented the airplane. I'm just trying to establish to you that this is God's original plan. There's, when you see all these inventions, this what Bill Gates and the rest of them do. Don't think it is because he is Bill Gates. No. Don't think it's because it's Warren Buffett. Or don't think it's because it's Steve Jobs. And you know, and these guys are not as Christian as you. Some of them are not even Christians. But if you check their lineage, their lineage is connected to the Jews. They may not profess Jesus as their savior. But there's an ancient covenant God made with the Jews. And years after, that covenant, look, that covenant was a covenant of wealth. How do you create wealth? Wealth does not reign. Wealth is created. It's called wealth creation. And wealth creation can only take place through application of principles. Application of wisdom. So you see what the Bill Gates and the rest of them are doing now. And you feel these are not judgeable. God just gave them. Where did those wisdom come from? Look, the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God. None comes from the devil. The devil has no invention. What it does is that he takes something God has put inside of you and he uses it for his own glory. What does he do? He has just three powerful professions. Steal, kill, destroy. He does not create. God didn't give the devil the ability to create. Okay, let me also shock you. You know why I know that? It's the devil was called Lucifer in heaven. He was one of the angelic bodies, but a super one. God did not create angels in image and likeness. That means even Lucifer and all other angels were not given creative ability. That's why angels are envious of you. When it came to the creation of man, 
God created man and gave him a creative ability. That's why he said, let us make man in our image and likeness. If God made angels in his image and likeness, God would have delegated the creation of man to angels. Okay. God made angels in his image and likeness. When we fell, God would have sent an angel to die for us. Something God made in his image and likeness fell. God needed something that had his image and likeness to redeem it. I, I hope you're following what I'm saying. I don't know if you're catching what I'm saying. <laughs> he needed something that has the same component to go and reclaim the thing that was lost. He couldn't send angels. Angels couldn't die. So when, when I see believers who can invent, believers who cannot operate in the functionalities of wisdom and divine intelligence, I know something is missing. This is not God's original plan. Yes, sin caused that in any way to go. But on the basis of the finished work, we can reclaim it. And operate in it. Look at the right brother. Children of pastors. Where did they get the inspiration to invent the play? Inside church service. Check all the inventors. Something about all of them points the fact that they serve God. Check. Maybe not directly, but check their lineage. They have something to do with God. Some of them, their fathers were preachers. Check. They always had that connection with God. Check Michael Faraday. Thomas Edison. Check uh, Benjamin Franklin. Check the Wright brothers. Check all those inventors. Even the Isaac Newtons. Check them. Something about them connected to God. And that creative function. That thing can be cooked up in the presence of God. Yeah, that's why when we come to church, you need to understand what discharges. But that your water reservoir is pumping water doesn't mean it's entering your house. That's why you need to carry revelational knowledge to know when something is going on in the atmosphere and convert that thing to tangible use. Because in service, the right brother decoded, they downloaded the code for inventing the airplane. God wants to return us back to that era because we have left it for a long time in the hands of the devil's children. And these same devil's children came from the church. Check most of them. Okay, check it that they meant. Where did they pick the answer from? From church. Check um, um, politics. Check. Where did they take these guys from? Michael Jackson from church. The gift came from God. The devil saw an opportunity because the church was playing religion. He came and picked the guy. And use the same gift. That was what he did with Jesus on um, on the Mount of Prayer. When he came to Jesus, the same thing the devil did to Jesus is what he's still doing. It's not different. He has not changed the formula. You see, the Bible says we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. He functions by strategy. He functions by devices. If you know that guy, it's the same old trick. He just rebrands. The product is the same. He just changed the cover, the package changes the packaging. It's just like producing a uh, pig milk. Today it is blue. Tomorrow you can change it to red, but it's the same content. Or you change your milo container to another. It's the same content. That's what the devil does. So if you know his device, it's easy to decode him and catch him. So see what he did to Jesus. He came into the garden. He said, if you know you're the son of God, turn this stone to bread. And Jesus replied him. Another time he said, if you know you're the son of God, eh, okay, look at all these things. They are all mine. The kingdoms of this world all belong to me. Can't you see? All you just need to do is just bow down and worship me. They are all yours. If Jesus could, if the devil could do it to Jesus, the son of the most high God, is it Jay-Z he will not do it to is he Michael Jackson? He will not do it. He did it to Jesus. The guy does not fear. Is it Beyonce? He will not do it. Church people. Whitney Houston. Church people. R. Kelly. Church people. 
just came, picked them out, picked them out, picked them out, and said, Look, all these things you have, just use it and serve me. You see this kingdom of the world, they all belong to you. The same thing that God already promised the guy is what he's promising them. The problem is that they don't know God wants to give it to them. So in a hurry to make name and make fame and make power and make money, they follow the devil. They end up serving him themselves and destroying the world. And check all of these things that has happened. All of them point to the fact that the church slept somewhere. We played religion. We clapped hands too much. We did a lot of ceremonies too much. And we left the main thing. The church people told their church persons. Pastors told their church people that politics is dirty game. Pastors sold that life. Yes. So politics is for the dirty ones. You are a Christian. Come out from among them and be you separate. So they... We invented songs that destroyed us. Take the whole world and give me Jesus. Take the whole world and give me Jesus. You take the whole world and give me Jesus. I'm satisfied. I'm 35. We sang songs that destroyed you. Take the word. What is the word? Systems. If you look at the Bible, you see there are three major definitions of the world. The world can be this physical geography, you see. The world. You look at the world, second definition, the world of people. You see people. The world, third definition of the world, systems and structures. We sang those. Take it, take it, take modeling. Take arts and entertainment. Take media. Take the educational world. Give me Jesus. Take the economy. Take the banks. Give me Jesus. I'm 35 with that. Satisfied. And the song should have been, I take the whole world because I have Jesus. I take the whole world. Who owns the crude oils? The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. What's your problem? You, you read your Bible upside down. He didn't say the heavens is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So all this heavenly rest, I'm not going to die. You are singing. You are hurried to go to heaven. God wants you to reclaim the earth. He didn't say the heaven the Lord and the fullness thereof. He said the earth, the Lord, and the fullness thereof. Fullness. He didn't say the halfness. He didn't say the one quarterness say the fullness <laughs> anything your eyes can behold on earth belongs to God the mountains quality everything industry the legal system we need sons now from the church SAS we need chief justices from the church if the chief judge of Nigeria the chief justice of Nigeria is a Christian who, who knows this thing I'm talking about? You see, justice has been enthroned in Nigeria. We have presidents, governors, senators, House of Assembly members, House of Reps, who make laws. And they don't make they, from their head. They make laws from the scripture. Check nations that have prospered. There were nations that used to be world power. For instance, UK. Britain. You call it Great Britain. Great Britain was a model nation for US to build. It was a nation, U.S. copy, to become a great nation. But the foundation for the images of Great Britain, the Bible. The king of Britain then, King James, built that nation using the Bible. When he was bequeathing authority to the queen, mm, this is it. This is the same thing. So when America was about to become a nation, an independent nation, after, you know, fathers came and they went, Consulting, what has made your nation number one in the world? I know Britain is made up of different other sovereign states. Oh, you see Scotland, England, and many other nations that are comprises of this nation called Britain. Very great nation. He came to find out how you were able to see 
different races and ethnic groups, different nationalities coming that as one sovereign nation. Wow. They check what happened. Because of how these guys served God, because of how they enthroned their nation on the principles of the, that came from the scripture, God was entrusting more territories into their hand. He was subduing. That was God's original plan for the children of Israel. Okay, which land was he telling Israel to go and subdue? See, I'm going to get you to into, into, into whatever, Canaan. You're going to subdue the Hittites, the Jebusites, and all the Tites. These are territories already subdued. They already, they already had people ruling those territories. But you see, when a nation has sworn covenant with God, when God has sworn covenant with the nation, that nation becomes a model nation. That nation takes other nations. Other nations submit under leadership. That is what happened to Israel. That was what God's original plan for Israel was all about. Okay. At the time, Britain was able to collect nations. They collected, um, check now, Scotland. Collected England, collected some other nations. After a while, check. You know, most of the nations who have independence, like Nigeria, were colonized by them. Are you aware? What, 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 what is that thing they have that was able to make them come into a nation like Nigeria and took total charge and control them? They stayed in this nation for years, teaching us how leadership works, teaching us how politics works, teaching us how to. Our country. You know why that was possible? This nation had a covenant with God. So they became a model nation for the rest of the world. Okay, they also colonized Ghana. And some other West African countries. They did. Okay, this morning, this is not majorly the center of my discussion. I'm flowing, you know, this direction. That, that's, that's what God wants to do. With the church. But we meet. America came to them and said, What is the secret? They showed them. What did they show them? He said, This Bible. He said, My father, King James, said that this is what has built America. So if you want your na- built in, uh, Britain, rather, if you want your nation, America, to be a great nation, build it on the Bible. Build it on the principles that stands from the word of God. Is that what it takes? Yes, sir. They carried this Bible, went back to America, enacted laws from the Bible, enacted legislations from the Bible, enacted their motto from the Bible. The motto of America is in God we trust. Where did it come from? From the Bible. That's the motto of a nation. I'm not saying that's the motto of a church. I'm not saying that's the motto of a business. That's the motto of a nation where the devil is now sitting as the whatever. That's the motto of a nation where Illuminati is ruling over. Freemason. That's the same motto of a nation. In God we trust. So where does America get the idea of take God away from society and give men whatever they want? Where did it come from? From the same God? No, from Satan. Now check what is going on with America now. America is losing it. America is losing it. America is losing it. The thing is gradually slipping up their hands. What power? They became what power? The thing is slipping. Now there's one nation challenging America to the core. China. Coming up with all kinds of things. Crazy inventions. Crazy everything. Okay, one of these days we will do a, a you know, a series on understanding, you know, Jewish codes and all of that. Show you the, 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 the history of prosperity of nations and why nations build. There are nations that have been mapped out, wiped out from the surface of the earth. Look at nations like the former Soviet Union, the USSR, wiped out. Many nations. If you look at nations like ancient Greece. Look at Troy, Athens. These nations completely gone. There is something they forgot. There is something they omitted. And any nation that looks back on God, gets God to look back on them. It's true. So the scriptures were the, were the principles on which these nations built. But the moment they live in the scriptures, God they living in them. So you see things like wisdom. You see things like invention. 
ideas, creative ability. All these things came from the Bible. All these things came by the inspiration from the word of God. There's inventors you can think about. But we slept somewhere. Revival. We lost revival. And the devil took it. But I have good news for you this morning. We are going back to basis. And the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former. Talking about church where we sit down. that You see the craziest, craziest, um, what is it called? The craziest inventions. The craziest arts. Arts work. First artist was God. Yes, he created man now. Don't you know you're an artwork? You're a piece of art. You don't know. My God. You are a piece of art. They drew you. Yeah. It's not what men are doing now. You see the one they built for Martin Luther King in um, America. You see the one they built for Nelson Mandela. Oh, the sculptures. The difference is that those ones can't move. But God showed his God by putting a vital light inside of you. But you are a sculpture. I watched one movie and there were sculptures standing, just standing, you know. And one magician just came, used his stick, and invokes life into the sculptures. And these sculptures carry souls, so they kill him. I say, Wow, this is exactly what God did though, with us. This was how he molded us, molded us, molded us. All of us were just standing. All of us were just standing. Maybe they created me with the mic in my hand. So God finished creating, 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 creating 7.2 billion people. After he finished creating, he just came. And now I'm there. I just came. He started dispatching us at the record time. He started dispatching us at record time. To go and fulfill the reason for which we were captured. We're getting back to it. Where the church we begin to build companies. Not, no longer would we just sit down and be asking God, God, can't you give me miracles? That is what the children of Israel were doing, the wilderness. Oh, God, give us manna. Ay, 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 ay. I will show you the two kinds of church that existed in the time of Moses and Joshua. Most the, the generation Moses led was a different generation from the one Joshua led. The one Moses led was the one that was always dependent on God. God give us manna. God give us water. The one Joshua led were the ones who were inventing technologies. I'll talk to you one day about the Joshua generation. The one Moses led were the ones where people had to depend on the man of God to stretch the road and part the sea. The one Joshua led were the ones where people were carrying ark and part the sea. It did technologies. It was a, it was a national shift. There was a shift in the nation. The one most led was dependent. The one most were independent. There was a shift. That is what is about to come back to the church. The church I am privileged to lead is going to be a church shift. Yes. Where companies will build systems, will sit down, build systems, and the world will build universities, build banks. Pascal Dozier, please, is it from the marine spirit? Is it from the marine world? She is a human being like you and me. He built the bank. You think some of these banks fell from the sky? All of these tellers you use, checkbook, transaction, ATM, all of that. Gmovia of Zenith Bank. Where do you think they came from? It dropped from heaven, bagam. The bank dropped from heaven, bagam. It's human beings. They are not owned by the government. They are owned by individuals. Airlines. Who own them? You think government own airlines? The government only regulate the aviation industry. It's individuals that own the airlines. Who own Virgin Atlantic? Who own? Richard Branson. Who own Airpeace? Who own um, name these airlines now? Arik and the rest of them. They 
are owned by individuals. It is your turn to own the nations. It's your turn to build systems. It's your turn to rule the world. But there is one component. This is what we are going to dwell on the whole of this month. The whole of July. We are returning back to wisdom. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Put it up. Show them the opening scripture. God did not create you alone in his image. The image of God is the nature of God. That nature deals with the, the person of God. The characteristics of God is the nature of God. That's his image. God said, let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. It's death. You see the word make them. That word make is create. Let us create man. In our image. After our likeness. Let us make man. In our image. After our likeness. See it. Let me paraphrase the scripture. Let us make man. To be like us and function like us. The be like God is the image of God. The functioning like God is the likeness of God. The image of God is the nature of God. Is the person of God. I give you image. Values. Okay, let me give you some values. Image of God. Love, integrity, service, um, humility, compassion, kindness, mercy. That's the image of God. That's the nature of God. Oh, he's a humble brother. There's what they call the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love. But remember, the fruit of the Spirit is even the gift of the Spirit. Okay. The fruit of the Spirit is where the nature of God is. That's where you produce, you see, love, passion, compassion, empathy, humility. Oh, that guy can't hold a fly. That's, I can't, you, if you like to slap her ten times, she'll be telling you, God bless you. She has long suffering image. Is it bad? No, it's not bad. Those ones concern is always about heavenly race. This word is not my own. I'm just a passerby. No, no, it's not an easy road. No, no, it's not an easy road. So they kick you once. You see? The Bible said, how many times should your brother slap you before you forgive? How many times will you forgive if he slap you? He said, 70 times, 70 times. The Bible said, if you slap one here, don't you ever let them slap. My brother, if, if you slap me here, before I turn this side, I will give you at least two on the same side you slap me. Then by the time I turn this, I say, okay, you can slap here now. But reconsider what will come next. You will... Am I breaking the law? No, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, good brothers, good sisters. But financially backward. Wisdom, backward. Success, backward. Dominion backward you you have you seen a man who walks effectively with one leg you want to walk to water walks now guy why are you going to water walks you've mastered using one leg eh have you seen a guy who walks like that one leg that's what a lot of christians are doing they are working on image 
But God did not plan for dominion to happen with one leg. That's why people can't enter. What is going on? They pray, 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 pray. Bind, 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 bind. Cast, cast, cast. They, are, they can't enter it. The, and they are blaming witches and wizards. You are walking on one leg. Image of God. Yeah, the spiritual image. Yeah, because God is a spirit and they that must worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, his image is also, is also his spirit. He is spiritual. They are spiritual. They are prayer warriors, his image. That's who he is. That's who he is. So that's, that's who you are. You spirit being. So, you pray tongues, you speak speak all the tongues you pray you worship image spirit that's who you are but you are walking on one leg you are walking on one leg and as long as you don't pray to God to bring back that amputated leg, you won't enter dominion. See the second thing. Go back to my scripture. Image. To be like God. What about likeness? What about likeness? Function like God. But see how the likeness works now. The likeness of God is the mental functionalities of God. The likeness of God is where all the seven spirit of God dwells. Spirit of counsel, spirit of revelation, spirit of wisdom, spirit of everything. The likeness of God is where vision lives. The likeness of God is where dream lives. Dream, dream, dream. Are they dream? That's where the likeness is. The likeness of God is where vision lives. The likeness of God, ideas live. Ideas rule the world. That's where it lives. The likeness of God is where um, um, ability to think, think. Not talking about worry. Create thinking. Critical thinking. That's where it lives. He said, according to our likeness. Now, see what will happen when they get the image and the likeness. He said, they will rule. Now, that's the output. The input is that you must be a carrier of the image, then a carrier of the likeness. Then when you have gotten that, the next thing that happens is that you begin to rule the fish of the sea. The fish of the sea. It's not necessarily the fish you catch from water. The fish of the sea. All the properties of the sea. Anytime you talk about the sea, you talk about wealth. The wealth of the sea shall be combated. The abundance of the sea shall be combated. You talk about the sea, you talk about wealth. Because you see, most of the wealth of the world came from water, crude oil, and gold. Take most of these resources that has made the world, countries rich from water. Let them rule over. So the fish, there's not the one that swims. Fish, properties of the sea, wealth of the sea, they shall rule. You have miners, miners. Men who can mine, they would drill things from the sea. Wealth embedded in the sea, they would drill it out. He said, the bears of the sky. The bears of the sky. They will even rule over the sky. They will rule over the sky. You see flights, airplane. You see where invention came from. They will rule over the bears of the sky. Okay? It's the animals all the earth and the creatures that are on the earth see what happens to a man who carries these two things so which one am i dwelling on this month i'm not dwelling on the image i'm going to be dwelling on the likeness all through the month if we balance it you see we've been praying 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 Believers who don't have the likeness will pray. After they pray, 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 they won't go and look for contracts. They won't go and create a business. They won't design a company. <laughs> they will not go and catch a vision. They will not catch a dream. 
you have just wasted that whole grace that came. Because grace does not function on grace alone. Great function in grace means truth. I don't know if you're catching what I'm saying. Grace only works when grace is truth. Truth is principles. That's the likeness of God. Principles. And one of it I want to deal with this morning. Wisdom. Wisdom. It has the ability to set you above kingdom. Kingdoms. Check all the men in the Bible who did extraordinary exploit in their time. Check them. Men of sound wisdom. If you look at the mission of this ministry, one of the things you find out is that everything I teach you revolves around that mission statement. To disciple, to deliver and disciple every believer into the total maturity of Christ. Into Christ's total maturity. And you see that bracket. You see mental, spiritual, social. The social deals with the relationship. It deals with favor. Because you cannot have favor until you have been seen. You can't have favor until relationship is in place. Okay, the spiritual deals with your prayer life, your word life. The spiritual deals with your fasting, deals with all of all those stuff you did to, you know. Then you see the mental deals with your head life, your wisdom life, deals with your thinking life, deals with your visions, deals with your goals, your ideas, and all of that, your dreams. So this morning now, I'm, func- I'm functioning on that other one that deals with the mental. That's what we're going to run in throughout the month of July. There's a grace that will come on everyone this morning that will activate it. Yeah. Trust me. We have done prayers and done prayers and done prayers throughout last month. Now, let's balance it. We have done the spiritual. Let's now do the mental. Grace has been released and grace is going to come this morning. It's going to activate your mind now. Some people are going to have a boost in their intellectual frequency. And I'll show you the prayer to pray. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Let me show you that scripture. Two of them that deal with the prayer. Before I forget it. So when you pray, you pray that scripture. Give me Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. Ephesians 1 17. Then you will give me um, Ephesians 1 verse 17. The other one will be Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Okay. Let me read this. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give you a spirit of wisdom. That's a prayer. And a revelation in the knowledge of Him. Mm -hmm. See what happens when you get it. See. Okay, again. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so you may know what is the hope of His calling what the glory riches there are riches hanging but until there's wisdom activated until there's enlightenment of the heart these riches will not come the riches of his inheritance among the saints not amongst the heathens amongst the saints amongst christians not amongst unbelievers that's the next verse 19 and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his vast strength what does it take your mind has to be illuminated wisdom has to be activated revelational knowledge understanding is the key to becoming outstanding wisdom is the key to ruling kingdoms you're going to pray that prayer god is there something what do you mean? Maybe sin nature. Maybe I have not given my life to Jesus. Maybe programming, mental programming. Maybe wrong programming. The environmental factors. Is there something holding me from functioning in this realm? God, bring down that wrong imagination. And let's, let's be reactivated. If God was on earth, God will not be broke. See, the biggest miracle that can happen to you is to know what and how to do. Hear this. I said the biggest miracle that can happen to you is to know what to do and know how to do at any given point in time. The biggest miracle that can happen to you is that when you meet a crossroad, you know the road to take. (laughs) What is answered prayers? 70% divine direction. 
That's answered prayers. What is answered prayers? I now have the answer to the problem. I know what to do. You call it answered prayers. When you pray, 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 pray. Hey God, give me answer to the prayer. Give me answer. I pray, pray, pray. God does not give you answer by giving you what you ask for. God, I need money. I need money. I need money. Thank you for answered prayer. You think the thank you for answered prayer is that God just carried the money. Bagam, bam, see the money. No, the answer to the prayer is that he gave you an answer on how to get the money. That's why you call it answer. It's called answer. God, eh? I, I, I want to do this. I need this. I need that. I need that. Okay, this is how to do it. This is how to do it. That's how to do it. What do you call it? Answer. Daddy, yes, I need money. Okay. Go to my drawer there. Open it. You will see. What do you call it? Answer. Jesus, yes, pay tax. Disciples, what do we do? What do we do? Peter, answer that request. Go to the fish. Open the mouth. Remove money and come and pay. Prayer answer. Eh? Are you following what I'm saying? Prayer answer. <laughs> That's the prayer to pray. The immeasurable greatness power to also believe. Okay, show me now Genesis chapter 1. Let me see if I can show them another prayer. God prayed this one. I will pray the one I want to show you now. God prayed it and you, you won't pray. Pray this morning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Down. Now the earth was formless and empty. Broke God. Poor God. Wretched God. You think he was always prosperous. You think he was always rich? You think all was well with him? No, it was not well with him. You think God had everything working out? No, things were not working out well for him. But you see what we do in Africa? Things are not working. We complain about them. Things are so bad. Things are so whatever. We worry about them. It's of putting our minds to the table and thinking how things are. See God's answer. Is it? it was formless and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the watery depths. Darkness. And the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. See confusion. Because the opposite of direction is confusion. <laughs> yes. A man who is confused is worse than a man who is broke. Yes. Not knowing what to do is more frustrating than not having money. Yes. You think your problem is that you don't have money. No, that's not the problem. The problem is that you don't have insight on what to do. Then you don't have understanding of how to do it. Okay, darkness covered the surface of the watery depth, and the spirit of God was hovering over the surface. Yes, why won't he hover? Hover aimlessly, confusion, misdirection. The next verse. Then God said, Prayer. That God said the prayer. Maybe God did something like this. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Where? Not in the world, in his mind. Hear this. Hear this. Let me shock you this. Those of you who think that light was to shine in the world so that the darkness would disappear. When God said, Let there be light, and there was light, the moment that light shines, God wouldn't have had need to create again. Because everything God needed would have been already created. Okay, I want to show you something. If you're looking for this microphone now, and it's dark all over this place, what do you need? Just find touch light. 
on the torchlight. You found it. What are you creating again? So God was not looking for anything in the physical. Because the physical was already empty. The darkness there didn't mean that there was the absence of light in the physical. God was seeing things grow. If God was not seeing things grow, he wouldn't have said that the world was empty and darkness covered the face of the deep. He was seeing clearly. You, you can't be in the dark and be seen there. No, you, he was seeing things. You can't be in the dark and be seen everywhere is empty. For you to know that it's empty, you must be able to see. So he was seeing the world clearly. Clearly. He saw clearly. But now, there were certain structures God needed in place. Would not come no matter how many touch light he flashes. That structure will only come when he flashes light inside. So he said, let there be a light. Light came. Where did the light come? In his mind. The moment the light came, that light gets vision. A future, a picture of a preferable future flashed in his mind. So the man knew he had the architectural plan. Now this is what the world should look like. He said, okay, 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 okay. He now had a goal, a big picture. It's called a vision. Vision is a big picture. Vision is your preferred destination. Vision is your actual future in your mental picture. You hear what I'm saying? That's what vision is. It's your actual future in your mental picture. So now God already saw it. Okay, I want this whole stuff around. I want this. But how am I going to live here now to death? Follow me. How do I move from here to there? And remember, the difference between here and there is T. T means time. So God needed to take advantage of the resources called time. This is where God is, but he already has a picture of where he wants to go to. So he measured the gap from here to there. He took T away from the there, which is time. And see what he invested into time. Number one. The next verse. Follow. You already had the picture. You already knew what the world would look like. But the world will not look like it until he goes through the process. So see the first principle now. You see, vision. There's vision. There's vision must first come. That's light. You must know where you want to go to, my friend. Five years from now, seven, ten years from now, where do you want to be? Vision. Now God saw that the light was good and God separated it. Okay, go to the next verse. See what God did then. God called the light day and he called the darkness night. Evening came and then morning, the first day. See where God created the morning now. The first day. What was God doing now? He took down the vision and broke it into achievable tangibles. Into achievable steps. He created the world in six good days, rested in, on the seventh day. What was God showing you? If you want to move from where you are now to where you want to be, there is a road to travel. And this road cannot be traveled until you break down the vision into goals. Goals are simply daily achievables. Goals are daily targets to be met. You cannot achieve a big goal in a day. You achieve a big goal daily. So, big vision of the world, not created in a day. Big vision. But now, after vision, the next principle, goal setting. Okay, this was supposed to be a prayer verse. Leave it. Let's go to the scripture now. I want to show you my close. This is going to run Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. This is how we're going to be running this. Just on wisdom. Everything about wisdom. I'll download it here. Then by the time I'm done with you now, you are going to run the devil out of town. Yes, you will. Okay. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Let's take that as our, as our opening scripture on wisdom. Wisdom is supreme. Give me King James. King James version. Let me use the word King this is what I'm looking for. Now, see it. Wisdom is the principal thing. 
not the vice principal. Wisdom is the principal thing. I found out not even prayer is the principal thing. <laughs> not even fasting. When you say something is principal, it means it's number one. That means the check Jesus and just grew in wisdom. First thing he grew in was wisdom. After a while, he matched it with spiritual development. <laughs> he grew in wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all your getting. With all your getting, if it means to sell a car to get wisdom. With all your getting. If it means staying on the news, on your news, until you get wisdom. With all your getting. If it means other vacation, other students are running back to their father's house for one month break. If it means be the only one in the hostel, do it and get wisdom. Those days when I was in school, what I was doing. First year, second year. Vacation. My parents will be calling. Why are you not coming back, my friend? Others have come back just in school. Only me in the hostel. Doing what? Getting wisdom. This time, not in the books I was reading in school. In other vast areas of life. Leadership. Relationship. Other areas. I was getting wisdom. Is it not unfortunate now that our present Africa doesn't read again. We don't research again. We hear the side of books. He said, with all thy getting, with all your salary, get wisdom. I used to say it this way. Empty your pores into your mind and soon your mind will fill your pores with gold. your pores into your mind and soon your mind will fill your pores with gold. With all your getting, if it means borrow books, borrow. Well, I'm going to be showing you the house to get wisdom. It's not just book alone. <laughs> it's a loaded month. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Loaded month. You know, it's my month. This is my own birthday gift to you. Okay. Okay. Can we see verse 8? Let me see. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. See God. Solomon calls wisdom a person. He said, exalt wisdom. And what wisdom do? Wisdom will promote. Promotion does not come from begging. Promotion does not come from knocking on one politician's door. Nah. Happy I'm can work in a agony born line. Because we cup of Gary will no no can can we one because 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 oh you are the laggy oh one day one day no promotion doesn't come from going to motor park and begging. I've seen people who beg in motor park from the days I was in the university. Year one, many years after I've graduated, they are still singing the same old song. What, what I go to peace mass. You see them there, they are in mass there. Begging is not a virtue. What is not a virtue either? Ignorance is not a virtue either. I define an ignorant man as an arrogant man. A man who is not teachable is a very proud man. <laughs> he can't learn. He can't buy books. He's very proud. For me, ignorance is associated with arrogance. You can't separate it. Teach a wise man now, he will become wiser. Teach a fool, he will despise you. Is your mode of wisdom. You will learn this mode. Only poor people. 
the word poor means passing over opportunities repeatedly. Only poor, arrogant people see a seminar of 1,000 naira or 2,000 naira and they say it is too costly. But the food in crunchy is not costly for them. He's an arrogant man. Do you know wisdom is a raw material for the anointing? The anointing is not a raw material for wisdom. I'll show you on Tuesday. How wisdom can be crushed into anointing. Do you know wisdom made me anointed? Not laying of hands. Yes, there's a part of laying of hands, I know. Wisdom made me anointed. Wisdom is light. It shines your... It, it makes your countenance radiant. My God, this is one of the most important value that if Africa gets, Nigerians get it, you will stand out from the crowd. It is not your face that makes you stand out. It's not your head. Which God is what sets you high above kingdoms. What made Solomon the most preferred? He's the one who wrote the book of Proverbs. What made him the most preferred? Even queens came to seek counsel from him. Kings came to seek counsel from a king. He became a profession to other leaders of kingdoms. What is it? People traveled miles to come and hear Solomon's wisdom. You want to have a fast growing church as a pastor? Eh, eh. It is not only in Makaya, Pata, Pata, Pata. Invest in your mind. Let your mouth become a library of wisdom. When people sit under you, they can't hear what they are hearing under you or any other place. Wisdom. The only way to travel further than your equals is not to buy a new car. And show them that you are driving the latest car. Not lie. The way to travel farther than your equals is to travel far in your mind. If you can travel far in your mind, you are ahead of your equals. You are ahead of them. Let me tell you something. Nothing can be so provoking and so repelling to me when I see people in the Sato school. When I see you, group of friends, you are 10 and you can't stand out. Joseph, prime minister of Egypt, taught Pharaoh's senators wisdom. Permit me to say this before I continue. Yesterday I was, <laughs> I was driving somewhere. We were driving. I was trying to supervise one or two what was going on in town. So I drove. You will get a lot of things about wisdom this season. How that a wise man's step is ordered by the Lord. Not a foolish man's step. A foolish man is always running into misfortune. He always runs into trouble. Wisdom even makes your spirit sensitive. This is the most key element the church has lost. That's why we come to church. And let me tell you, after this season, before this year ends, the wisdom of you will be packing dangerous cars here because of what your mind will conceive and achieve. Wisdom. Wisdom has made people driving cars they didn't buy with their money. If you lack wisdom, you will lack everything. If you lack wisdom, you will lack everything you need in life. It's tied to something you must know consciously. Hey, did you hear that? Everything you need in life is connected to something you must deliberately know. Deliberately know. Wisdom in financial management, wisdom in financial management, wisdom in marriage, wisdom in, um, in, in academics, wisdom in every area of your life you want to be outstanding. Wisdom. Not prayers. Wisdom. So I, I drove, I, I just drove in. Packed. Came from the car. We walked into crunches. Because I was so busy, busy, busy. And they were begging me, sir, let's go and buy you something. Let's go. It's your birthday today. Yeah, your birthday. You are busy driving all around the town. And let's go and get you something to eat, sir. Say, sir, it's your day. Anything you want, just be taken. We are here for you. So I got in, okay. 
let me get some little stuff and eat so I can continue the day's job. The moment I walked in, hey, one great man of God, Apostle Ben Gai Bafen, saw me. He said, hey, man of God, man of God. He opened, I knelt down, he carried me up. He said, he hugged me, hugged me, hugged me, hugged me, hugged me. Hey, I come down. I said, God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. He said, you, eh, you, I expected seeing you. I have not seen you, I said, sir. You have to see your, this thing everywhere in town, your program, that's powerful. He said, I need to talk with you. Come, 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 come. He left his food. The spear carried it upstairs and the pastor who is hosting him in town. They went upstairs with the pastor's mom. I was with him. We got upstairs. They sat down. I went and sat on my seat. <laughs> I came to eat too. They said, Pastor, what do you want us to get for you so we can eat? I said, you don't yet know your pastor. Get our food, package it and take it away. Can't eat here. I'm in the presence of a man, a general. He said, I should be eating while he's eating. I won't eat. Every other person sat down. Goes, you okay, okay. Them. All of them sat down. They were eating. I went and sat on the seat. I was eating my own. You know why? The guy has to stand out. I sat down there. After a while, the guy was like, Ah, Pastor Prince, why are you doing that? Come, come, come. He carried his own food. Brrr. He said, Make a day here. I want to stay with this guy. He brought his food. He sat down. He said, he said, Let me tell you something. I'm a man of the spirit. I see things. He said, You see you. The kind of head I never see. He said, ah, yeah. he said, look, God wired electricity in your head. <laughs> I was looking at him. He talked to you. He said, tell me more about your ministry. I opened my mouth. We were there for more than one hour. I opened my mouth. In one five minutes, I just gave him a little few structures and systems. And uh, I said, we are doing something beyond the church. We are running a church that is non-churchy and all that. And we're building systems, that, 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 that. Talked about a few institutes like IED, the Institute of Employability and Entrepreneurship Development. I talked about them. Um, and talked about a few things. You know, just, just little, little talk. Then he said, hey. He said, wow. He said, well, you know, your pastor, Reverend David O'Billy, I'm instrumental to the exploit in his ministry. I used to be, we are, we are very close. Da, 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 da. When I see what he's doing today, I'm amazed. And the way I'm looking at you, the resemblance is over too much. He said, you, he said, he said, ah, okay, okay. He said, are you married? How, how many children do you have? <laughs> he looked at me, ah, that you, uh, I'll marry this, yes, so don't worry. He said, you mean, how old are you, how old are you? I told him, I won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I he dropped his spoon. Back up. He said, my God, you don't talk it. You don't look it. You don't act it. He said, where did this come from? He said, make sure I see you this evening in the program. I said, no problem, sir. I will come. I will come. He said, come, 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 come. So we're going downstairs. After him, he was like, help me on the hand. We're going downstairs. He said, they could not leave me. He said, this is the next guy about to happen. He was broadcasting all over crunches. This is the next guy about to happen. My able should go. Leave me, leave me, leave me, leave me. He helped me. He said, give me your card, give me your card. He said, ah, I came in here. I saw your book on that stand there. You wrote that book. I said, I've done 166, sir. And more are coming. He said, my God. He said, when I looked at the book, he said, the quality, the title. So you mean, apart from pastor, you're doing business consultancy. You're doing, I said, all of them. He was like, my God, what kind of guy is this? He finished talking. He entered his car. Collected my phone. He said, Make sure you come. If you don't call, I'll call you. Come, come, come. See you. My problem, sir. He drove up. So, some people set me up with bed day yesterday at Vegas and they told me one pop and do story that somebody who was somewhere doing something that I needed to see. So, knowing my curiosity, I want to know what are you doing? So, so and so, please. So, and so, please. So, I just jived in there. But I'm dressed for the program. Once I enter, they all on like. Ooh. Balloons, they break it. Bah, bah, bah. Happy birthday! Look at them and say, What? Everywhere they correct their cake, black cards. I was like, Are these mobs? They, they, they don't want to mob me. None of that. Happy birthday everywhere. I was so grateful to God. We finished from there. I left for the program at WDC. Me, Buchi, and Nena. We got to. The man was preaching. I got to myself. He carried me. Brother, carried me. No, Pastor C. Pastor C. I said, I'm okay here. Carrying my cross. Went and sat down there. The man preached, saw me and talked. He said, hey, man of God. When, of course, when I met him in front of 
I reason like somebody wants to go for. And that's what I want to teach you. When you will need grace, honor grace. I met him. Money I came with there. Honorably, I wanted to use and do one or two things that day. I emptied it. Removed 10,000. Put it in an envelope. Carried it and gave him. He was a wise man. You're going for See, I am not a evil man. Pastor cannot visit me in my house and give him 20 hundred. It's not possible. I can meet him. A prophet of God I know, this man, he has been a father before I was even born. And I leave him going to hand. I put something in his hand. So in the evening when I got there, I stood there. And I see he went with more sacrifice. I, I stood there. He talked, faced me. I was talking, talking, talking. He said, Man, let me tell you something. You don't know where God is taking you yet. He said, you don't even have an idea. He said, your ministry is different, unique and people. He said, you are an advisor to governors and president. He was talking to me. I stood time I knelt down. He said, come, 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 man of God. I stopped. He said, okay, okay, stay there, stay there. He kept talking. I was looking for where to hide. He talked to carry the seed, went and dropped. I think I went back. There were other pastors in that meeting. Plenty pastors in that meeting. What is that thing that made me stood from the rest? I didn't stay there for 20 minutes. I just walked in, went to others have been attending the program since the first day. I came in that day only. Just stood there in two, three, how many minutes? Not up to 20 minutes. I was just there. I had not yet sat down. He has started talking to me. Finished, I went and saw the little seat again. I got up to leave. But the difference was clear, was clear. And I could see it on the faces of everybody. I went back to my circle. I was reflecting on a few things. I said, God, what is this thing that is capable of making a man stand out? This same wisdom. I will pay the price for it. I have not even paid the price for it. What is that thing that is capable of making a, an ordinary man extraordinary? Making you an advisor to president. Making governor sit down and listen to you. When I was sleeping last night, I saw myself speaking in the National House of Assembly. All the senators were gathered, sitting. I saw my, they just ushered me in, carried the microphone. As they're talking. By the time I knew it, people were standing up, were sweating. By the time I said, is there no AC in this place? Why are they all sweating like this? They said, put on the ACs. They increased the AC. People were still sweating. That was another real life. Somebody spoke to me. They said, don't you know you are injecting them with something here? And I got up from bed. And I was like, my dominant thought will soon become my reality. I said, okay, what is the price a man would pay that would make him stand out from other pastors in town? I said, God, I will pay that price no matter the cost. I would give up everything. Money, I will give up cars, I will give up clothes to give wisdom. And after a while, that wisdom is going to fill my purse, fill my purse with God. That's why I said this whole month of July, I would dedicate it to equipping your mind so that any way you are seen as a victim, you will stand out. You stand out. When someone is looking for somebody to buy something from, do business with they look for you. Last scripture. Daniel chapter 6. Something made Daniel stood out. And we are talking about a generation that will reclaim lost territories. Reclaim back the world. We have got to think. We have got to download wisdom. I got back to my hotel. I sent him a text message. Thanking him for everything. And he sent me a text name of God. And everything still boils down to the wisdom of You're one of the wisest of the kind that I've ever seen. I have not sat with that man for more than that. But it's something when you carry, when people see you, they know you. Are you hear what I'm saying? Wisdom has, there's this countenance it gives you. When people see you, they know. There's a way it shapes your look. There's a way it even conditions the way you walk. There's this kingliness. Is this palace life you download? 
can abuse yourself. Give me Daniel. Daniel chapter 5 verse 12. You can't. This month you are going to stand out. I didn't hear your amen. amen. I said this month you are going to stand out. Amen. Because God is going to equip you with all that it takes in your mind. Amen. All that it takes. Stop asking God for things. Tangible things. Ask him more for intangible things. God, give me wisdom, revelation, knowledge, understanding, and uh, ability to think, creativity, ideas. That's what we pray and ask you this morning. For as much as an excellent spirit and age and understanding, interpretation of dreams. See one man. Daniel. One man. Two. One man. Daniel. The next verse. The next. And shewing of hard senses. The man had an excellent spirit. He had knowledge. He had understanding. He had ability of showing of hard sentences. And dissolving out. That is solving hard mathematical equations. Not the ones in your class. Hard political mathematical equations. Nigeria is at the crossroad economically. Somebody needs something like this to solve is solving of doubt. I went to a meeting where all fighters in the boy gathered yesterday. Went to address them with some people. When we got there, he was talking to them. The truth was talking to them. I sat down where I sat. I was looking at them. I said, these guys need help. That's what I said. These guys need help. Of course, how can the church help them when the church is locked inside? Schools need help. Hard mathematical equations. That's dissolving of doubt. These are were found in the same Daniel. Like the Bible, eh? the way it uses one. It didn't say found in Daniel. So you don't think they are true. Found in the same. Whom the king named. Let's continue. Belsazar. Now let Daniel be called. And he will show the interpretation. The guy has just dreamt. King Nebuchadnezzar has just dreamt a very, very, very hard dream. See what the man said. I need somebody in the whole of this kingdom. Who will not only interpret the dream, before he interprets, he must tell me what I dreamt. Do I know what you dreamt last night? So you go and meet and say, Pastor, tell me what I dreamt last night and I interpret it. At least tell me what you dreamt and let me interpret it. Daniel's own was also. Daniel's own was. Tell me what I dreamt in the previous dream. Is that not hard puzzle? Where do you want to start from? You can't do try and error here. It's not this one. People are coming out. Who is in Kechi here? There can be many Kechi. Who is uh, Obiageli? You're wearing a red shirt. I mean, you wear red shirt here. That's not it. That one is guesswork. This one. Tell me what I dreamt. Tell me the situation. And you think what that man would carry is what he was taught in school to get that thing done. <laughs> Daniel, they called and he will show you the interpretation. The next verse. And remember that they called all the magicians in that kingdom. None of them could. And the king was about putting all of them to death. So he destroyed all of them until Daniel came in and said, Hey, 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 tell the king to stop that. There's no need killing anybody. I'm here. 
Let him give me three days and do something. And inquire of my God what that dream is. Three days came and left. He came back and said, That and came, live forever. This is my dream. How many number of magicians will have died if one Daniel was not in the land? Because they couldn't, astrologers couldn't break the king's will. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel? Hey, Buhari will say, Are you that prince? I've been hearing about. Some of you want your fame to go abroad. You're just looking for where to go and announce yourself. Or looking for who to go and knock on his door. You don't need all that. Carry something that will make men look for you. Kings. They will come. They have to feel, feel form. They will wait. Queen of Sheba came to Solomon. I doubt that Daniel, which at of the children of the captivity of Judah, he was living in captivity. Who the king, my father, brought out of jewelry? Uh-huh. Jewelry. Uh-huh. He didn't hear that the spirit of the gods is indeed, and that light and understanding, and that light, no sun, light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Next verse. And now the wise men, the astrologers, see, a man becomes so wise that even wise people cannot understand him. Wise people, people called wise, cannot do what he does. And now the wise men, not foolish men, hey, wise men. Look at somebody standing up with wise men. Wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read these writings and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the, the interpretation of the thing. Okay. And chapter 6, verse 3. Chapter 6, verse 3. Oh, an impartation is going to happen here right now. Daniel 6, verse 3. Then this Daniel. Follow. Because of what he has done. Because he could interpret the king's dream. Because he could bring stability to a kingdom. See, this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes. Because an excellent spirit. We say excellent spirit. <laughs> yeah, maybe I didn't hear the title of what I'm teaching you this week. Let me tell you now. I'm talking to you now and I title Downloading an Excellent Spirit. You can download it. Catching an excellent spirit. Catching an excellent spirit can be caught. If you don't have it, you will have it. This month, you will catch it. You will catch it. An excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. See what happens to a man who has an excellent spirit. The king thought of setting him over the whole realm. The king thought of setting him over the whole estate. Over the whole company. Over the whole big. It's not happened to Joseph. Joseph carried administrative wisdom, entered the house of Potiphar. Potiphar put him in charge of the whole house, except his wife. A servant. The king thought of putting him over the whole government, over the whole state. Joseph carried that same spirit to the prison. From the prison to the palace, I was set over the whole realm. The same thing happened to that. You want to see yourself move from obscurity, move from mediocrity into a place of dominion, into a place of kingship, into a place of influence. Listen, 
Listen, stop looking for our friends. Our friends come when you need to us. Our friends is wealth, money, prestige, faith. Our friends come when you have influence. Strive to be a man of influence. Strive to be a man that carries substance. Strive to be a man that carries content. Strive to be a man that can solve the hard equations of life. Strive to be that man. The first thing we're going to be doing in this month, starting this morning, is that we're going to be praying to God for the reign of that wisdom. For the reign of excellence. People. Whatever damaged my mind, for some of you, rejection. For some of you, poverty. For some of you, you didn't have the best education. For some of you, uh, whatever. For well, listen, God can recreate your mind. For some of you, failure of the past. For some of you, fear. Defeatism. For some of you, inferiority complex. All sorts of things has impacted on your mind. And you feel there's no way out again. There's nothing I can do with my life again. I am so dumb. Some of you, negative words. Some of you, you were not shown love. People didn't love you. You feel you are not accepted. Some of you, inferiority complex. You stand before somebody and you seem the best better than you. You know what your own is. You're going to pray a special prayer for you this morning. And say, God, I need a recreated mind. You are going to call light into your mind this morning. We're going to pray that prayer and out on Tuesday. I'm going to continue on it with this I step. The methodologies, the patterns, the steps that is required for gaining wisdom. Steps that is required for becoming a man of understanding. It takes wisdom to build a thing. It takes understanding to establish a thing. Build through wisdom. Establishment is settlement. no longer struggle. He has said it. Understand it. Put everything that has been built in place. Put systems in place. Things can run without you even monitoring them. That is understanding. He has understanding of ministry. You have understanding of ministry. You have understanding of that thing. Understanding is mastery. It's mastery. It's mastery. He has mastery of that profession. He become outstanding. He has mastery of it. He becomes a master. God wants to bless church like never before. This is the price. This is the price. Let me tell you something. There is no limitation anywhere in life. There is no roadblock anywhere in life. There is no obstacle anywhere in life. Your obstacle is simply your mind. Your limitation plea in your mind. God gave you a mind so you can give him rest. All the prayers, God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. No. God wants to give you a creative mind so he can have rest. He rested on the seventh day. He has not stood up again. Please, if you shout it, stand up and show yourself strong. Stand up and move your hand. Stand up and move your hand. He did Jesus. He is seated at the right hand side of God. The Bible says, sit down here until I make your enemy of Christ. He will remember and stand up. Read your Bible well. So, why are you asking him to stand? Jesus, stand up and find my God. Because the Father says, I should sit down here. He makes my enemies. So, I'm sitting there, I'm not standing. Don't you have a mighty thing? That's what he's telling me. That's the way out of crisis. Somewhere in this series, I will show you how to get out of any crisis. Somewhere, I don't know where, but follow on the services. Follow the Tuesday services. There are generations. Don't pull up and down. 
we don't stay on a thing until we become it. If I ask you, who are you now, you can't do that. You don't, you don't know how to stay on a thing until you become it. There's a price to pay for becoming who you want to become. The price is, you must stay on that thing. The resistance. It's not try to that. You are out tomorrow. You do it to get a thing fails. You, you leave it. And one time after it fails, you leave it. Jump here. No. Stay on one thing until you become it. Stay with all the services. Until everything in this service you become it. Stay with the tapes. Order the tapes. Stay on it. Shock it. Don't need to bother about whether there's food now. I once had no food, my friend. I once had no place I was living. I once passed a church whose first service was just for people. I didn't abandon it. I stayed with it. What does it take to pastor the most mega church in the world? You pay the price for it. Even if the thing is killing me, I'll stay on it. The thing is crossing me. I'll stay on it. I don't have that abandonment mentality. When the whole world tells me this thing can't work, I need to work to make it work. So what the people are saying is we who need to walk to walk. And with time I will clear all doubts. So you need to stay on this wisdom thing. Yeah? There are things I used to tell my classmates. I saw my poster yesterday. They were showing me. You know, I don't have to face the church. They were showing me the place. So I looked at one, the one he posted. And somebody replied, he said, uh, my schoolmate. And he said, wow, he's not a good guy. Look at that, he laughed. Okay. Yeah, schoolmates, no destiny mates. Schoolmates, yes, no success mates. Classmates, no success mates. No death mates. Room, no success mates. Some of you, you mate, 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 mate. I want to repeat all the mates. So this guy failed. He becomes failure mate. He falls sick. He becomes his sick mate. He's broke. He becomes. There are people who go. I don't know. We are like we are just twin. The same. It's like God destined us to do. Anytime he's failing, we talk. Anytime he's succeeding, we talk. Anytime he's broke, I'm also broke. I don't know. Could be like that. The whole destiny in your hand and chuck a cost for your life. No. That is why we are backing on, we are backing on this series. Stay with it. All the Tuesday services, all the Wednesday services, all the Friday services. Stay with it. Stay with it. This is what we're going to be doing. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Some of you are asking now, where's your vision? You can't say anything. Some of you can just show me the paper, but you don't yet know the, the strategy for bringing it past. You don't yet have the wisdom for bringing that to pass. There are people who have a problem with timing. They know their timing. In this, I'll be showing you things on timing, things on divine direction. A lot of things. They don't know where God is steering them to move and take it. They analyze it though until grace on that level passes. Lift up your hands and your voice now. What you want from God, pray on your life. In the line with of this thing, God is on. That's God. Let there be a reign of an excellent spirit in this house, Father. Lift up your voice before God. We believe you've been transformed by the wonders of God's word. For additional information about us, you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 0806-499-5029, 0812-511-3214. Princeton Hills Ministries, Raising Global, Raising Global Leaders. Global Leaders.